It's Wednesday, and we woke up to 32 degrees here in Simpsonville. I uh, understand that it went down into the low 20s last night on uh, Melrose and uh, our cabin up there. But uh, I, today I was thinking about associations. Uh, we're uh, planning a little festivity here at the house uh, in Simpsonville and inviting in some of our new friends here in the condo complex and inviting some of our old friends from Florida that have moved up to this part of the country and a few people that we don't know real well. You see, one of the problems that happens very often when we become Christians is we only hang out with Christians. We only hang out with those that have exactly the same faith beliefs that we have. And yet, many times our witnessing opportunities only come when we associate with others. Uh, in chapter 15, it's really interesting uh, because uh, as it leads into a soul-winning section of scripture about lost sheep, lost coins, and so on, it says, Now all the tax gatherers and sinners were coming near to him to listen to him. But the Pharisees and the scribes began grumbling, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. <laughs> well, you know, it's uh, really funny. We sometimes have to associate with others that are not exactly like us in order to be able to share our faith. And Jesus certainly couldn't have brought a lot of the people that he brought into his saving knowledge of his kingdom uh, unless he associated with them. And so uh, as we have opportunities, we need to do that. Uh, recently, I spoke with a very dear friend who had an opportunity to travel uh, quite a distance from home carrying a lot of extra equipment so that he could put on a little concert. At the end of the concert, uh, he gave an opportunity for all of the children to come up and sit around him and for him to be able to share his testimony of how he came to know Christ. What a wonderful opportunity. And if you didn't accept opportunities like that, you wouldn't have a chance to share your faith. Now remember, I've shared with you on a number of occasions that there is a main street and a ditch on either side. Uh, I remember many years ago, Bob Harrington, the chaplain of Bourbon Street, said it was necessary for him to go into bars and strip places along uh, the main street in New Orleans in order to win souls. The problem was that he was so often with those in the bars and the strip places that he became unfaithful to his wife and became careless in his own lifestyle. So you see, we need to be with them in order to win them, but we've got to be careful that they don't have more influence on us than we have on them. Delicate balance, isn't it, to who to associate with and who not to associate with, who to spend time with, and who not to spend time with. So be careful. When you're going down the main street of Christianity, be ready to share, but if you find any magnetism or if you find that they're having a greater influence on you than you're having on them, it's a good idea to steer clear. Be careful that uh, unhealthy relationships don't establish themselves and to be sure that you are not of the world, but you're in the world and that you would have an influence in the world. As a matter of fact, in chapter 14, it talks about salt and light. And we're supposed to be salt and light, but we have to be very careful about our associations. And so I hope that you'll remember that because that's your thought for today. Be careful of your associations, but be sure that you're in the world, having an influence for Christ in the world, but not of the world, and letting the world have an influence on you. God bless you and have a great day.